Hello, I'm Paul Raftery and I'm CEO of Projects RH in Sydney. Today I'm joined by the Executive Chairman of Pan Ocean Capital, John Martin Taylor in Hong Kong. Hi, John. How are you today, Paul? Good, thank you. First, a little about John. John is a securities and resources lawyer from Canada and he practiced there between 1977 and 2003, after which he went to Hong Kong and established Pan, the Pan Ocean Group. During his period as a lawyer, he assisted and maintained the development of resources and other companies, particularly on the Toronto Stock Exchange. He has assisted numerous companies around the world to enhance their financing and to become listed. John has worked in many jurisdictions in both the resources and securities interest, industries. Pan Ocean Advisory Group is a, a relationship-based house and it works with companies today based in Hong Kong and Vancouver. He has, has recent successes in natural resources, renewable energy, high tech, medical technologies and bio industries. John and I talk probably six days a week. And one of the exciting things we've seen is mining back on the front page. We both looked at our work at hand and saw how much of it was to do with mining. When we looked at what we've been doing over the last three years, we saw that during COVID-19 that mining really came off the main agenda. Today, when I look at our list, we have projects in Ethiopia, South Africa, Canada, Australia, and Colombia, just to name a few. John is probably fairly similar. So, John, can you just talk to us a bit about what you're seeing and the countries and places okay. in these sectors? I, I, I will, Paul. First of all, just a, a small correction on that synopsis of myself. W when I was a lawyer, I concentrated on the Vancouver Stock Exchange, which subsequently merged with the Toronto Stock Exchange to form the Venture Exchange, as well as I was finishing my practice, the Canadian Stock Exchange was, was uh, started and I practiced securities law with respect to listings and the RTOs on both exchanges. So mining, yes, mining. It was actually very flat in, in Hong Kong for many years. And then when COVID came, it basically petered out completely. But over the last six months, there's been a, an amazing change in, in, in what's happening. The, the people in Hong Kong are excited about real estate mostly, but right now the real estate prices are unstable with rising interest rates around the world. And they're focusing more on other ways to make money. And it seems that copper, gold, silver, precious metals and rare earths are attracting them. Over the last few months, we've seen, as you just mentioned, Paul, a, a, a big rise in the amount of business that's coming from resource companies around the world into my offices and yours as well. Would you agree with that? Oh, look, it's, it's absolutely huge. I mean, that they were quiet. What we're seeing, though, is, is a demand particularly driven by the desire to become green. Decarbonisation is making many minerals we thought were quite active and people are wanting to secure not just supply but the benefits of investment. The other exception to that is people are also looking for gold, which is normally a, a hedge against worrying about something around the corner. What we've seen is also a lot of localised investment, so people in a country focusing on investment around them as opposed to anywhere in the world yes yeah, so so to get back to them but we're also seeing yeah. a lot of end users wanting to well, invest. I, I i agree with sorry to interrupt but i agree with your green initiative comments I, there's a lot of interest in electric cars and batteries and we're seeing a, 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 a actually a phenomenal interest in in market awareness and raising money in Asia for lithium and tellurium projects. And anything that 
is related to cleaning the earth. Uh, uh, we on Friday, which is just the other day, we, we had uh, two groups in one from Dubai and one from Vancouver, both both looking for us to help them uh, raise financing and create market awareness of their companies. And we're really surprised because this activity has stepped up so much so that we're, we're expanding our back office and um, creating a larger network. And that is why we were talking two days a week, then three days a week, and now at least six days a week, Paul. <laughs> so whilst people are knocking on the door, is there money available? There's definitely money available. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the, the appetite in Hong Kong was for real estate around the world, but with the higher interest rates and uh, extremely high prices, people are looking, or people, small family offices, or even Hong Kong listed companies are looking to invest in resources. And as you say, gold, copper, and the, uh, the rare, rare earths. And we're finding... Uh, the appetite growing it's 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 actually actually miraculous it's growing in front of our eyes we, we can we're watching it evolve. As, as you step back and think about it it's logical what we are seeing is a transformation in the economy i mean we do a lot of power business and we have for the last 10 years and people are going into more renewable energy and the big question in australia is storage i mean most people want to harvest the sun and they need to effectively store that power we're getting now the same inquiries not only from california but from Colombia. but people have faced the same issue they have regulatory reporting that they have to show that they're being green and that they need to show the sources of their energy or carbon footprint and to do that they need these rare earths and and lithium and but we continue to see a lot of interest in gold Yes, I, I agree, and a lot of the a lot of the traditional uh, people in the venture capital industry, uh, where I'm from, Vancouver, Toronto, and in your jurisdiction, Perth, are are shifting off the traditional re resources and looking more into the rare earths, uh, the the lithium lithium mining is starting to boom. To, to keep up with the future well, demand. I think lithium will continue to because of the fear of the nationalization of the industry in Chile. I mean, whilst Australia is the largest producer, Chile is a clear number two. And that um, a lot of international companies are in Chile in the industry and they have not seen other people investing because of this fear. So this will put pressure on not just the lithium industries around the world, but on other substitutes or complements for lithium. I mean, one of the things with tellariums, its great claim is that you use less lithium to make a more stable, compact, high, more highly rechargeable battery. If those things can be sustained, those industries will go through the roof. Now, just for all our podcast friends out there, I'm always amazed at how much Paul knows about the topics that I'm working on. <laughs> There's a lot of research, and the fact that you the fact that you talked about tellurium is, uh, and you knew all about it when I only introduced it to you two or three days ago is amazing. So thank you very much. <laughs> uh, but look, we've got the same thing in, with valerium in South Africa. We're looking at a project there. Um, so we'll have to go on that journey very shortly, perhaps right. this afternoon. Um, but what we are seeing is clear interest from both sides. 